So, just got back home, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I've been speaking to Beth. Is she can wave, there you go. <laughs> so pretty much, people, we, um, what, I've, what I pretty much said to Beth is I'm just going to take her to show her the pawn shops in the, um, around Akihabara, just to see her face expression. <laughs> Um, as you guys know, I cannot record in the pawn shots because Abby demonetized in literally split seconds. But all this lot, people, is going to be as a recap very shortly. So I'll be right back when I come back from the pawn shop. Well, I am back to the hotel, people. I've had a nice long chat with Beth, took her around Akihabara by video chat, showed her the pawn shops. She was pissing herself laughing. And sadly, I got caught in one of them because I was filming. And uh, he just told me to um, just stop filming it. So I literally just turned it off and went back to chat. And he just he, he, he was happy with it. I said to my set and he, he pretty much forgave me. They're quite easy forgiving, the Japanese. So I got very, very lucky there. Sometimes they'd ask you to leave, but he, he didn't. Probably because he wanted more money. Okay. Uh, it made me thinking, oh, wait a minute, more, more money. I didn't buy anything. It's because they think if they chuck you, that means you won't come back. That's how it is. Anyhow, uh, as I was walking, but as I was walking with her, I got myself something to eat. I bought myself um, that uh, chicken on a stick and uh, beef on a stick <laughs> and uh, corn dog with cheese on a stick. <laughs> and then I had some ice cream that was on a stick. <laughs> I was eating everything on a stick today. But anyhow. Um, so yeah, today's at the zoo was absolutely phenomenal. I absolutely enjoyed it. It was fantastic. I saw every single animal this time. We got to see the pandas, all three of them. Sadly, I got to able to film two of them, so I take pictures of two of them. We couldn't get the third one because of paparazzis and actual film peak crew. So that's the reason for that. Now, after I left there, um, and also before there, as you guys know, I went to the shrine, took pictures of the cherry blossoms. I also prayed. I give you guys the exact reasons why I did that, but you guys will find out never because I won't talk about it. And then after that, I felt myself, you know what? Now's the time to go ahead and go back to Ikebukuru one more time to Nakano's uh, Broadway one more time. I was missing something. I was thinking about this all night last night. Do I go back and get them now before somebody else buys them? So I went back and I double checked and everything, the price changes, like I said, from the uh, Akihabara to other places that I've been to. And one, um, two things were correct, price corrected correctly, the others were Akihabara was more cheaper. So probably tomorrow after I've been to Ginza, that's where we're going tomorrow, we're going to Ginza, we're having our beef steak, our freaking Kobe beef wagyu dinner. Yes people, I'm excited to eat some fucking ragu one more time. I even know I have been having ragu today, but it's not proper A5 Kobe beef. We're having that. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's new. Kobe beef's not as good anymore. It's Miyazaki. It's, it, it's the other beef. You know, Fuck you. I love Kobe beef. I think it's phenomenal. It's great flavour. Love the taste. Anyhow, I also went to Mandrake. I went to the shop that I saw them, which was Cube Style. And I went to... Uh... Chatter Arise National Sweets and Gifts. So this is actually a bakery, but also I found a book off there. Um, it was getting, it was um, a little bit crowded, and they literally were strict, no filming. And boy oh boy, people, I picked up some fucking gems. I picked up some gems, but also picked up fucking cheap console. A cheap console, people. You may be thinking, wait a minute, what cheap console are you being? I'm talking about 1,500 yen for fucking console, people. Nine quid. You lot of you be thinking, nah, bullshit, let me see the evidence. The evidence is fucking here, people. So, without further ado, let me show you what I bought today. So first off, we're going to do it all in categories. So first off, let's do the, um, the Famicom games. I bought five Famicom games right now, people. These are from Mandrake. So, I don't have a clue what a lot of these are, but some of them I know have an exact know what they are. So we have this one right here, which I paid 600 yen for, well, with tax, it's 660 yen. It does look quite cool, to be honest, I like the look of it. The next one is called, uh, don't have a clue, it looks, it just says hot something, hot scenes, I don't know, 770 yen. Looks quite cool. 
Then one that's called Combat, which is 550 yen. I picked up ones that I think that look quite cool and also ones that I know that I do not have. We also paid this one up for 1,100 yen, Rockman 5, which is Mega Man 5, and Mega Man 4 for 1,000 yen. Really, really good, to be honest, people. I need to double check to see if I can actually see this shit. Yeah, I knew it was going really to be fucking blurry. There we go. And I'm sorry if the, um, if the words have been swapped around, but I'm going to swap them around when I'm recording, okay, people? So... Don't you guys worry, I will put the, the um, cameras around when I'm when I'm doing my editing. Am I right, future Dobsy? Of course I am. Next up on the 3DS, Attack on Titans. I saw the reviews about the 3DS version. Some people did not like it, but I like Attack on Titans. I might as well get the other one. I have all the rest of them, so I might as well get this one. Because we never got the 3DS version, if I recall. If we did, it was extremely rare. On the Super Famicom, the SNES, we got ourselves Kirby for 900 yen. Still quite cheap for these retro games right now, people. This here, boxed for 1,500 yen, uh, first mission, Gun Hazard. Looks quite cool, to be honest, people. Really cool indeed. I like it. And then, as well, on the Super Famicom, we got ourselves Final Fight 2. Looks quite good, and this is also for 1,500 yen. So yeah, I did a quite a good shopping spree, people, so for some retro games right there. To be honest. Um, next up, though, uh, some CDs. I picked up uh, this year Final Fantasy, the original soundtrack, collector's edition. I paid 1,000 yen for this. It looks absolutely phenomenal, people. Freaking phenomenal. So you so do this there artwork for both the front and for the back and you get yourself pretty much the blur of the um, story about chaos and the cos and cosmos which is pretty much the good and the bad the good bad and the ugly so there's that for a thousand yen uh, next thing I picked up, Final Fantasy XIII 2 original soundtrack. F uh, five freaking discs, people. Look at that. Look at all them. They're all the soundtracks, people. That's all the music. And they're all like specially wrapped up like this. Let me just open up one just so I know what it looks like. It has its own like little tiny sheet of paper. Oh, man. Look at it. And so that this is inside like that. Okay, I know that I should not be opening this up properly right now. I gotta do that when I'm not um, busy. And that's cute. You get yourself a little mo Moogle Mog on the opposite side. Cute. Yeah, how much did I pay for this one? If I recall, I think I paid uh, one thousand and three hundred for this. Next up, uh, this one was from uh, Cube Style. I paid um, I paid uh, fourteen thousand and eight hundred and eighty yen for this. Shining Fates. You guessed it. A boost box of Shining Fates. Um, why have I chosen to get myself um, Hidden Fates, people? Is because. I'm still hunting down Charizard, okay? I'm hunting it down. Um, again, it was not a sealed booster box. It was already open, but the guy said they are not weighed. Do I believe him? Like I said, Japanese can lie. You guys know that. They're not all truthful. But it's YouTube content, and it's going to get open for the channel. So we'll find out if they've been weighed or they've not been weighed. Uh, next up, I paid uh, 9,980 yen. This box. Uh, I know nothing about this. It's called the Mystery Box from Pokemon. Uh, this was definitely from the Pokemon Center. Have I overpriced myself with this? Now, this is one thing. I wanted to open this up, but when I when I remember how much I paid for this, I paid less than 10,000 yen for this, less than 60 quid. 
I have a gut feeling this thing is worth a lot of money. And I want to double make sure now with eBay. Just to see. Holy shit! See the prices? It's 145 pounds for this thing! It's fucking like it's a fucking feather! Holy shit, so what does it contain? So it contains its storage box, a special V-card, two promo cards, a deck box, and five, six, seven booster packs. That is it. Sheesh! This thing is staying sealed, people. Staying sealed. I am not opening that up. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, next up, I paid 2,500 yen for this. Look at that. That's freaking cool. This is the um, Dimension Box Limited Edition. It comes with five spe uh, four special cards. They look like they're all secrets. Yes, they are. Uh, two secrets. Oh, no, four secrets. All four, all four of them are secrets. It comes with a deck box and uh, a pack of sleeves. Don't actually have a clue what else is in here. Um... Possibly it may have a few boost packs inside it, but I really don't think it does. I think it's just what it consists of there. But for 2,500 yen, that to me is a fucking steal. I don't think they knew what they had on them. So I want to double check on how much this thing is worth right now. Dude! This thing is 45 pounds, man. 45 quid. I've just doubled the price. But once again, this is going to get open, people, not get going to be kept sealed. I want to open that up for the channel. Next up, this is 100% staying sealed. I know how much this thing is worth, but I want to double check it. Again, 2,500 yen I paid for this. It's English. A Yu-Gi-Oh! 2,008. 2008 people 2008 the duelist pack collection it contains three packs of duelist pack you say one duel of genesis one preview pack with three foil cards from raging battles one exclusive ultra card and one 5d's beginner's guide this thing is freaking horsepower gold shit this thing is fucking rare you don't get these sealed ever Literally, people, it's sealed. It's in mint condition. How much does this thing go for now? Let's check it. Oh, my God. 57. 57 quid. 80 quid. Seven, but easy 60 quid right there, people. Jeez, that's ten, that should have been 10,000 yen. But it wasn't. It was 2,500 yen. Holy crap. And next up. I did tell you I paid 2,005, I definitely did tell you I paid 1,500 yen for this. A Nintendo DS, I, I mean not I, a light, Nintendo DS light, Mosaic Blue, or Baby Blue if you want to call it, Ice Blue. And you may be thinking, but Dobbs, it's Japanese, you don't need it. There is a way around it people, and I did it after I bought it. These are pretty much Japanese consoles, but you can turn them into English. All you needed to do, turn it on, and it was already and it was already charged up, people. And I've got it. Go, I've already got it on English settings. You just click on that square box there. Go to your settings. Go to your world there, and then from Japanese, change it back to English, and that's it. You have got an English console. And yes, it is region free, so you can play Japanese games and English games. But Dobsy, how do you fucking know? How do you fucking know? Because I fucking done it myself. The other thing about it, it's, it has a a you a, a Japanese um, wire, but I've got plumbing converters, so it's easy. And I've got and I've got loads of DS Lite um, chargers with me, so. Hell yeah! <laughs> oh yeah, boy! I fucking love this shit! Oh man! Literally nine quid. 
nine freaking quid, people. Do you know how much these things are worth boxed? Let's let's go ahead and find out. Come on, give me something good. Give me give me a fucking blessing. Oh my god! <laughs> you gotta be fucking shitting me! No fucking way! Oh my god! Boxed and complete. Box the complete from Japan. £200! Holy shit! <laughs> of course, you do get your. If you only have the actual console itself, it's only worth 40 quid. But if you get it boxed and everything, and has everything else in it, which this is, this is a box condition one. Um, if some people may think, oh, but if you take it to CEX, you know they're not going to give you that. Let me double check. Everything inside there, including an extra stylus pen, is in there. The extra stylus pen. No scratches. Clean as a freaking whistle, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That is boxed. Finito. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, yeah! I fucking love being a game hunter! <laughs> Anyhow, now there is one thing left I haven't shown yet, people, and that is the uh, Chateau Riser. This is a bakery. So, pretty much, I picked up a load of different stuff from the bakery. This is the last thing I want to show you, people, before I do say goodbye. These all these little tiny cakes and everything. Literally, loads of little things. Now you may be thinking, am I just going to go ahead and review them today, or well, tonight? Um, I will be, but not in this episode, people. If you guys want to see me review the, these sweets and all these candies, make sure you stay tuned on to the channel when I actually review all this lot. Because I will do this in front of you guys for your entertainment. So, if you guys want to watch that video, please go ahead and check that out when I do upload it on the channel. If not... Fair enough, I understand, but this is like the old school Cha Cha Bite episodes, if you guys want to know, if you guys have been on my channel for such a long time. But without further ado, that's the end of the night. If I'm not, if I'm doing anything else, it's more likely I might be going to sleep, or probably watch a bit of Japanese TV, or I might go to Walton's for a quick, a quick drink, a quick drink or two. And then, tomorrow morning, we're moved to Ginza. Well, um, now journey across Japan, that's freaking abroad in Japan's fucking thing. Welcome to the Dobbs Wolves Japan's Adventures. Today it is Monday the 13th. We are literally in the halfway point now, people. We're literally got one week left in Tokyo and then that is it. We'll be going back to the United Kingdom and we're going to live in it back our normal lives. That's right, our lives will be back to normal and all that shenanigans. Work will be starting again, my videos will be uploaded, <laughs> everything will go back to the way it was. But before we do go back there, today's, today yesterday, uh, we are be going to Ginza. We're going to go to one of my absolute favourite steak places, Ginza Steak, where they make have Kobe beef and A5 Wagyu of all types of meats from all over Japan. We'll be having a good dinner there. And besides that, besides that, we'll be checking out if there's any book offs there, some hard offs, mandrakes, you get the gist of it. There's also supposed to be some other anime shops in there, like the Final Fantasies and the Kingdom Hearts stuff. Yeah, so it's just going to be a nice day in Ginza. Um, if there's spare time after Ginza, we'll probably go to, um, I will be heading back to Akihabara for myself to uh, pick up some other stuff that I wanted from a collection so of course there's a Yu-Gi-Oh! Jewel disc that I've been wanting to get but I want to double to make sure if it has everything at once there is some other video games that I found and also I found out that Trader in Akihabara has some English slash American games meaning the exclusive Final Fantasy 9 that is actually a physical version not a digital download which I'll be picking up myself um, besides that <laughs> yeah it's going to be a nice, a nice lovely day in there uh, Ginza, I think. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get something nice to eat uh, for breakfast because it is 9 o'clock in the morning. And I'll see you guys when we get to Ginza. Let's get going. 
Well, I don't like them clouds. Worst to show. It's not even looking good up there either. I, just, I literally only went in there for only about, about half an hour just to drink a nice cup of hot chocolate. Still for white day and everything. Come outside. It looks like it's about to fucking rain. Right then. I won't go straight to Ginza just yet. I'll straight back to my hotel and get my coat. Because I do not want to get soaked and get a cold. So let's go back to the hotel right, right now. Let's get a coat on. So, I'm going to go for a walk. So, what I've decided to do, people, because I looked at the Ginza and everything. So, the Ginza restaurant opens up around about 11.30. That's too early for me to have some, have some steak with me. So I've decided to go for the walk instead. See if catch some, you know, catch some sceneries and everything. But these clouds, people, these clouds do not look promising. It's getting bleak and it's getting dark. There's gonna be a, there's gonna be rain and there's gonna be a lot of it. Also on the weather forecast, it should open the hell's gate. Well open 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 up heaven's gates with this fucking rain around 11 o'clock it's now about nine o'clock ish so i've got time to get somewhere say well you know get somewhere that's dry if not i'll just have to uh film myself in the, in the rain hopefully not to ruin the camera because like i said i don't want to ruin this camera but uh i'm pretty much taking the same walking route um well, I mainly went to the Imperial Palace, so literally I know exactly the same route that I'm taking. Um, but a lot, a lot of the places now are starting to open up now. You got a load of restaurants opening up now. Um, Akihabara is still closed at the minute because they open up until later. But I was looking around because do you guys remember in 2017 when we went to uh, Ginza? Um, the uh, Ginza, freaking hell, what was it called again? Uh, the Ginza Kit Kat um, chocolatey um, place. Why are you quite dark? There we are. Um, I've been trying to research it, trying to find it now. Can't seem to find it anymore. So, does that mean that it's shut down? That's been moved? Because the one that's showing up now is the one, like, North, well, never east, sort of we? about northwest of Chioda. So, but people say that that's the best of the best one. So, probably I have to go there at one point, probably today, to be honest, because, like I said, I'm going to Ginza mainly because I'm going for the steak dinner. But the sh there, what I've seen on the um, on the camp on the maps and everything, it looks like there is a book off there. A trader, a trainer, or a trana, a tra a trader, a trader. It's it's how you pro pro pronounce it. We call it trader, but over it's it's pronounced completely different. But it's a game shop. But it also does DVDs and Blu-rays because you guys know me. I'm not stopping until I get myself all the Gakuno Sukais and the documentals. Documentals. We've got two left to find, people. We're missing uh, five and seven literally the last two and the gakamasu guys i have no idea how many we're missing i think we're missing around about at least seven of them or something like that which is going to be tough now because all the common ones are all showing up now and i think the rare ones are the ones we're looking for so pray to the gods we do find them i've not even gone to the properly into mandrake properly in akiabra so I'll have to do that at one point because it's just, there's so much to do, but so little time. But I can de definitely tell you this, I have enjoyed myself here. Now a lot of people may be thinking, oh you're gone, this is the third time and everything, you may not enjoy it as you did last time. It's more like because it's been such a long ass wait to get back here. A lot of people may think that, thinking oh you've been waiting for so long and everything, you've hyped it up to death you're not going to enjoy it as much. I still enjoyed it for what it was. Do I say it's better than 2017? It Borderlands almost does. I still think that 2017 had some big massive um, um, memories, if you guys want to say. 
but like I said, I'm making newer memories here. And don't you guys worry, there is going to be great content. I'll tell you that truthfully. If you don't like the content, you're on the wrong channel, people. You really are. But for you guys who liked the last lot of vlogs from Tokyo in 2016 and 2017, we're doing well, okay? So let's go ahead and keep pressing on and see where we end up. These clouds do not look promising, people. This is not looking good. But at least we know where, exactly where we are. We're near the, um, I think this is the, I don't know if this was the courthouse or this was the, one of the museums. But we're where we're, we're exactly where we saw that wedding happen. Do you guys remember? I sat over there and there was literally a bride and a groom taking their wedding pictures. Beautiful that was. That was a lovely, um, that was a lovely couple that was. Um, but yeah, I've been researching high and low whilst I sat down for a minute to try and find out, see if the uh, Ginza Kit Kat is still knocking about. It turns out it got shut down uh, last year and they got moved. Guess where? Ikebukuru. So it looks like we'll be going down there the third time. So, probably then after I've looked around Ginza and gone for a Ginza steak, we'll go straight to Ikebukuru to go to the Kit Kat factory because I need to get picked up some Kit Kats and everything. So that means maybe, maybe I might go back to that uh, book off again, see what else I can find. Because like I said, they always put stuff on shelves every single day 24 seven, so. I may be looking, I might find another Nintendo DS that's 1,500 yen again. Because that was just an amazing find last night. Anyhow, I think that's enough for my break now. It's time for me to keep on walking before this rain turns up because I can feel it. You can smell the rain! At least this gives us a bit of a chance though. Because with this rain and everything going on, we may be lucky then because when the rain fully starts because there's supposed to be a chance of 80% of rain all day today so from 11 o'clock till 4 or 2 o'clock I think it was 2 o'clock, 1400 hours, yeah 2 o'clock we can definitely see that all the plants will start sucking up on that water so that's definitely meaning then we may get our cherry blossoms sooner rather than later and it's starting to rain now people, holy shit Yay! Even without me noticing, I just noticed it though. The Mitsubishi building. Well, people are massive car lovers. This is the actual building where they think, plan, and elaborate on what car they should make next. Sheesh! <laughs> okay, people, so it looks like the rain stopped a little bit, which is great. That is the Imperial Palace right over there that we went past, where the big massive moat is. But, right behind me, it's like another little tiny garden type of area. Pretty much people where people go there and uh, rest up and everything and just read a book and some shit like that. I'm gonna go in there and see what we can find. Okay? Let's go and check it out. Okay, I am extremely close to Godiva. The question is, is how the fuck do I get in there? I mean, following all these directions, left, right, up, down, left, right, circle, square, but freaking hell, it's fucking annoying. Well, I found the city centre, so Godiva is in there, so if you guys want to know what is Godiva, now I've literally been researching this high low on exactly what Godiva actually is as a chocolate tier. If you guys know me, I was a chocolate tier for, for quite a long time, until I passed it all over and uh, gave it all up. Um, Godiva is pretty much one of the most luxurious chocolates known to man. It's the most luxurious one. Um, it, people say it beats Slattery, it beats haagen it beats everything that a chocolate has ever been to. Um, pretty much Dubai swear by it, they have so many shops over there. In America, they have it in every single expensive area, so especially in um, Hollywood and the um, Beverly Hills, they're literally everywhere. Anyway, that's bougie. And for over here in Tokyo, they try and make it as bougie as they can be, but also as a fair price as well for the normal people. So, let's go inside and try and find it, and also, I need a toilet. I need a piss and a shit.
<laughs> oh, that's an interesting bit of art architecture. I have no idea what it is. It must be the one that um, Randy Marsh shot out. It's the silver turd. <laughs> Anyhow, I have found Godiva. Let's see what we can find. So looking good. Alright, leave, leave it to me people. I'm gonna go a bit of shopping now before and I'll tell you what we bought in because I don't like I said. Well I remember people, white day. So if you've got loved ones for your life, you get yourself some good diver. Unfortunately for me, I don't have one, but I'm gonna treat myself instead. <laughs> so that was a good little start for Godiva. I have to say so for myself. Now you can class me a motherfucking bougie. <laughs> I'm bougie as shit. Um, so yeah, what did I buy in that? So I bought myself, you know, like I said, I found the potato chips that um, I had in the airport. Sadly the milk chocolate ones weren't there anymore because they said that it was sold out. So probably because, it's called, because of the season. Now it's white day, there's limited edition, which are white chocolate. So I bought the two they had in there. But besides that, I picked up um, the Godiva milk chocolate bar and the Godiva chocolate pearls with mint and the dark chocolate. I like the sound of them. I'll be tasting them in a bit, but right now, I've got these with me. And uh, what time is it now? Hang on a second. Let me uh, put you where the scenery is so you guys can enjoy the scenery there. Hopefully you guys enjoy that scenery right there. It is now 11.01, so, hmm, now, where were we about, um, the one for the Kit Kat? Because we want to go to that Kit Kat one as well, so, let me go ahead and research this one really quick. So yeah, um, quite happy on what I picked up today already for uh, chocolatiering. I love my chocolates, you guys know that so much. You should be, you fat bastard, you fat bastard, you fat bastard. Ah, uh, don't give two shits. Now let's see. Right, so it's 11, it's, it's an 11 minutes tram ride, it's 16 minutes for the walk. Ah, uh, not too bad. And it is, is it open? Tell me if it's open first. I need to know. Please, I need to know if it's open or not. It must be open. Yeah, it's gotta be open. Yeah, fuck it. We're gonna go there anyhow and check it out. So, it takes us a 16 minute walk, ladies and gentlemen. It takes us 16 minutes, so we're down here, and we have to move all the way up here. 17 minutes is not too far, to be honest. And the rain has passed by for a little bit, but it will come back sooner or later. So, yeah, I better get my skates on, and I'm gonna try and put this in my backpack. Let's hope. <laughs> See you guys in a bit. Bye! Hello, what's up here? Let's see where this takes us to. It's a bit of a detour from uh, what I was actually going to go to, to Ginza Park. Well, pretty much I'm nearly in Ginza now. And it turns out when I researched it, even I spoke to Mama Dobbs to ask her for some intel, she says it's still open, the Kit Kat place. It's just that it's pretty much under wraps. Oh my goodness. How the hell did I miss this out? Holy crap, this is beautiful. Jeez. I could just sit here and watch this all day long if I wanted to. Oh man.
must be early morning for the ducks because they're all asleep. Oh, that one moved. Yeah, all of them were pretty much asleep. Sure, I didn't even know. I didn't know ducks can sleep. <laughs> well, of course they've got freaking eyes. Ah, there's one there. He's moving. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, they're all awake. Oh, they're all woken up. Oh, shit. Apologies if it's quite windy, people. If you guys can't hear me as much, I'll try and put my hand out near the mic just so you guys can hear me better. But yeah, this place is beautiful, people. Super lovely. Oh my god, it blew in a bloody gale. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm getting blown away. <laughs> well, it looks like. Yeah, it's just like a normal standard park. I'm happy I came up here now. Literally, it's like you get a park like this, turn around, you got the street, you got the streets. More crows up there again. So it tells you they love nature. It's not like us lot in Manchester and London or all like, ah, oh, we love nature. Yeah, then why on earth is there vodka bottles all over the park? Why is there freaking dragon soup everywhere? Where's the throw up on the floor? Why is there shit on the floor? Why do I see used condoms on the floor? And that has happened, people. We've seen it all over the United Kingdom. Don't say you haven't, because you have. You just haven't never noticed it. Dr. Jose Rizal, national hero of the Philippines. Yeah, for the people who, who, are, who live in the Philippines, this is a bit of history for you guys. Stayed in 1888 at Tokyo Hotel, located at this site. Oh shit, this one. Jeez. Uh, unveiled June 1990, uh, the 19th of June, 1961. The bust of Dr. Jose R. Rizal has been added to this historical marker of the occasion of the centennial anniversary of Philippine independence, 1998, 19, I mean 1898 to 1998. So this guy was a hundred, almost. Oh, he, he died young, but it's a hundred-year marker. Oh, God bless you, Doctor Jose. My name is Jose Jalapeno. <laughs> oh, no. Honest, I was also looking at the map as well, looking for Godiva. Uh, if you guys remember when I was here in 2017, I bought some crisps in the um, airport and they were chocolate covered crisps and I absolutely loved them. I ate them on the airport and then I regret that I ate them because I could have saved them at home. Well, I was struggling to try and find them all over the internet. Well, well, I did see them on the internet, but it was like at least £30, not including the postage. I wasn't going to pay that much for crisps. So I just typed in Godiva right now whilst I'm waiting for to stay to open up, Kit Kat to open up. I'm literally standing right near it. So, more likely, it's around here somewhere. Let's try and find it. Okay, so, I tried to look for this, that one, that um, Godiva around there, but it turns out it was inside a hotel place. So I wasn't gonna go in and say, I have a wonder Godiva. No, oh, fuck off. So I found another one that actually is open right now. So I'm gonna go check it out right now. Fucking hell. Hub. British pub. Fucking hell. <laughs> Fish and chips as well. Fucking hell, love. <laughs> there you go, Beth. You got what you wanted. But, um, yeah, Ginza is just like I remember it. Pretty much food, cuisine, everything like that. And designers. Not as much as designer as you can see in Rapongi, but there's definitely some stuff out here and a lot, lot more glam. But I can definitely say it's getting harder and harder to find other places that I've not been to. So it's getting a lot more uh, 
we're pretty much finding all these same areas that we've been to but I'm just going to different different I'm pretty much going through different turns that I don't take so there's that I'm knackered I told you people walking is good for you but it fucks me over tenfold <laughs> especially when I've been doing it every single day Whew. I tell you though you walk it you burn it off you, re you refuel and do it all over again but either way let's press on shall we Oh, Don Quixote! Oh my god! Right, detour then. We're going to check out Don Quixote. I've always wanted to go in a Don Quixote. I keep on missing out the opportunity for me to go there. I'm not missing it this time. I know there was one in Akiba, but I'm going to go to this one instead. Don Quixote. And if you don't know what Don Quixote is, we have a little duck there. So it might be blowing a bastard gale. She may not hear me much. But that some bitch right there is Don Quixote. And if I'm 100% certain, then do you guys remember the, the fucking hell? Do you remember the guy from Idiot Abroad, Carl Pilkinson? When he picked up the crisp picker? That's what I'm going to go after. <laughs> I'm 100% certain that's in Don Quixote. Let's try and get there. Well, first off, we need to tackle the freaking winds up the stairs. Let's go. Shit, a fucking brick. Gale here. That's because, like I said, they've had so much sun. They definitely do need the, the rain and the coolness breeze for these lot. Oh my god! Shit! God, it's windy up here. Oh my god! Oof. It's a good thing I haven't got a lot of stuff. Camera blows off me hand. I've not even gone to the Kit Kat shop yet, but Don Quixote has shit from the Kit Kat. Can't put the camera away though, sorry guys. Well, that was quite an unexpected um, shop to be honest. Uh, bad news though, no Chris Picker Ripper. I need to double check on where exactly where Carl Pilkinson went when he picked that thing up. Because that would just the most, that would make the trip so freaking worth it, even more than anything. Um, but either way, they had a shit ton of Kit Kats in there. Possibly the same stuff that they may have in this Kit Kat factory over here, the chocolate here one. But like I said, the chocolate here one is the bougiest one. So there will be some very expensive ones there. Then after that, we'll be heading straight to Ginza Steak, have our dinner. And then possibly after that, we can easily go ahead and enjoy ourselves. Cool. I've seen it all. Bangkok night. Best, best offers. We suck cock for five quid. Oh God. <laughs> I'm joking people, that is actually a restaurant. That's just literally called Bangkok night. Why would they call it that? But fuck it, it's there. <laughs> So there is the Kit Kat Chocolatiery from Ginza and uh, yeah the um, sign has been boarded up on the front of the glass window and up there it's all been sealed away so this place is actually shut down but yet they still advertise it on the internet they need to get that changed because some people will get that mi mixed up now so if you want to try and find out which one is the correct one to go to is the one in Ikebukuru, which I'll probably go there later on today um, after I've been in Ginza because the next stop we're going to then, sadly after walking all this way for nothing at least we've got some Kit Kats either way from Don Quixote it's the Ginza Steak, so let's go ahead and get there next Jeez, the Christian Dior catalogue if I remember in the UK that bag right there costs around about 975 quid I'll be surprised if it's worth more over here because Christian Dio over here is like a god to fashion over here. A true god. Um, so yeah, as you guys know, this is the actual Ginza district that you guys know and love. And it is the most expensive area. We went past Louis Vuitton, we've gone past Christian Dio, there's Hublot. There's literally everything. Prada. 
you can't go wrong literally every ounce of luxury is here and guess what I'm not going to any of them <laughs> do you think I've got that fucking amount of money yes I did take bring 770,000 yen with me but that money goes to my collection shit not for fashion do you think I'm a fashion guru no way I'm a I mean I'm a bumming Englishman Englishmen don't have fashion we wear bumming trackies and jeans and probably a leather jacket and that's it so we're not going to any of them yeah I can have a look at the fucking windows and everything but that's as much as you, you guys are gonna get because I don't give two shits about fashion whatsoever.